Hey, it's me, Jen again. Today, we're learning more about treating thyroid nodules with laser ablation from an expert who is training physicians all over the world. We'll be joined by Dr. Stefano Spiezia coming up. Laser ablation may be relatively new to the United States, but Dr. Spiezia has been using ablative techniques to shrink thyroid nodules since 1996. Today, we'll learn from this veteran physician what this procedure is like and how we may see it grow in popularity and prevalence in the very near future. So nice to meet you. And I'm so excited to hear about what you're doing in the United States while you're here on this trip. You're crisscrossing the country, I've heard. Yeah, sure. It was a very exciting trip to New York where we did a conference with Professor Mike Tato that, you know, is a well-known endocrinologist. And the day after, we performed in the Memorial Sloan Catering Center the first case of microcarcinoma of thyroid. This was a very exciting experience. Now I'm in New Orleans. Hope to continue this experience uh, traveling to San Francisco this, uh, this evening uh, where I have a conference and finally come back to Italy on Sunday. I'm so excited you got to be a part of that case at Memorial Sloan Kettering because patients are very excited about the opportunity to treat thyroid cancers without surgery. Yes, I, I completely agree with you because uh, I am one of the supporter of the Save the Thyroid plan, because our mind can, can change in order to respect patients, our persons, and we need to respect the awareness of these people uh, about the integrity of the body. Why remove the thyroid gland when this is not necessary to have a cure? Because uh, removing the gland for a benign pathology is a mm. nonsense, because we remove it a very important gland in the body. And I'll, I'll try to show to you and your followers my respect for this request of the patient. So this technique, I think that is a very innovative for, for the United States because I have been used this technique since 1996, mm. when we started our program, protocol, clinical trials before starting with this procedure. So for me, is the first technology I have used for the treatment of uh, thyroid nodules. And after that, start other programs with RFA and so on. Who is the ideal candidate for this procedure? Who is it meant for? The ideal candidates uh, are people that have mainly benign pathologies, people suffering from compressive uh, multinodular goiters that, has a, a that have a bulge in the neck with an aesthetic discomfort. People that have compressive symptoms that start to uh, have difficulties in swallowing, speaking with a large mass that uh, move the trachea to the other side. These are the main indication for people that uh, has problems that are proved benign pathologies with uh, fine needle aspiration biopsy. But we have also to consider people that expressly refuse to have surgery because they are concerned about surgery to replace a gland uh, with uh, a long-life medication with the levothyroxine that cannot completely replace the function of the thyroid gland. A comparison mm -hmm. uh, with the thyroid gland and uh, a, a philharmonic orchestra. Each one of the players are very skilled music players, but when they play music all together without a director, we cannot appreciate the full plenty harmony of the orchestra. This is what thyroid does. It's a director of orchestra done by all the organs and the cells that are targeted by the hormones. You know that thyroid produces iodine-based hormones that are dysregulator of all the cells and all the organs. So it's important to save the thyroid because it cannot be replaced, it can be partially replaced by hormones. But there are a lot of problems, post-thyroidectomy syndrome patients, that after the total thyroidectomy continue to have insomnia, feel very tired, problems with the hair, with the skin, agitation, and so on. This problem cannot be solved. We try uh, to 
partially solve them with uh, vitamins, the selenium and magnesium to recover this lack of functions, but it's not always possible. So I think that uh, we have to push to save the thyroid. The other candidates are people with uh, autonomous functioning thyroid nodules, uh, young ladies that uh, decide to have a pregnancy, so they are not good candidates for radio iodine, that is the other gold standard treatment for the autonomous function in thyroid nodules. Why not thermal ablative treatments? In this case, mainly laser treatment, very safe, is a very potential alternative treatment. And then uh, there are uh, indications for patients that have metastasis of recurrences deriving from thyroid carcinomas that have been operated several times. It's a tragedy because they formerly operated for thyroidectomy. Then when they have the ambulances of malignancy are operated for lymphadenectomy. And so they are operated two, three, four times. When you uh, discover recurrences and metastasis, these patients are very tired. They want not to live with the persistence of this pathology and do follow up and discover again to have the tumor. So in this case, patients refuse to have surgery. And also surgery is very difficult to apply in the operative bed that was used previously several times. So it's a, a very hard challenge for very skilled operator. By this technique, mainly laser thermal ablation, we can reach these metastases or these recurrences also in anatomical places that are very difficult to reach in a very easy and safe way. Obviously, it needs, in this case, differently from the benign pathologies, a very skilled operator because it needs a procedure that is very, very difficult to apply for this patient to, to reach a satisfactory result. So this is the panorama of opportunity that we can give to the patients, having in our mind that we have to respect their desire. The patient that decide not to have scar in the neck deserve this respect. And you have the duty to offer a chance for the cure. I absolutely loved your explanation of that, Dr. Spezia. The patient you described at the very beginning with the large mass, the deviated trachea, difficulty swallowing and breathing, that was me. I've been in that position before. And I remember just how horrible that was. And I know a lot of patients who've been there too. I also know a lot of patients who've struggled with the autonomously functioning nodules, the hormone surges that cause them to feel just horrible with the anxiety and hot flashes. Obviously, these are problems that patients want to solve, especially the, the issue with the recurrences. Someone just reached out to me yesterday asking what they could do for her mother who had recurrences. So it's very exciting to know that in addition to RFA, that there's this opportunity available here with laser. So can you give me a quick overview of the procedure step-by-step? Step, what is it like for the patient undergoing this procedure? You have to imagine that the laser is a light that is generated by focused beam of light energy. How can we use this energy, this powerful energy to treat this lesion? This was the great intuition that in the nineties was done by my friend, Claudio Pacella, that was the inventor of this technique. We can use fiber optic laser that are very thin laser fiber, about uh, three millimeter, that are introduced into the sheet of a needle guide. Also the needle guide is very thin, is a, a 21 gauge. That means about less than one millimeter, 0.8. By this technique, we introduce needle guide in the target thyroid nodule, and then we introduce the fiber lasso. So the, the needle guide is uh, uh, the way to introduce the laser because the laser fiber is very, very thin, it's flexible, so cannot introduce without this guide. When we introduce this system into the target tissue, we can light on the laser generator. We let the photonic energy derived from the laser. We transform this energy interacting with the cell in heating. So literally the tissue is burned. This is the way how we reach the necrosis of the tissue. So this is an interaction between the photonic energy and the result on the targeted tissue that produced a very controlled 
and safe volume of energy. How is possible to do this? Think that when we started, we did everything with a free end technique. So we inserted the needle into the nodule, doing some calculation on the effects of this energy on the tissue and in order to predict how much volume of necrosis we can produce. Uh, now we have a protocol that is named moduli treatment with laser that allow us to plan everything before the treatment. We have a software that is linked to the generator of laser and to the US machine because everything's done under ultrasonographic guidance. When we activate this software, we can control on the screen monitor according to the shape of the nodule, the volume of the nodule, how position the fibers inside the nodule. So nothing is with casualty. To treat large nodules, we probably need in some cases to introduce two needles guide. And this position can be checked only by the software in order to produce a very large necrosis, but in a safe way. So you plan everything. You decide how much energy to deliver to obtain your target necrotic lesion. And then we can retract the needle if we need to enlarge the volume. There is a marker. It's very simple to do this. Then we turn on the generator and wait. The total amount of energy that we planned before has been reached. Then we'll see all the results in the monitor, changes in the ultrasonographic appearance of the nodule, and then we stop the procedure when everything is done according to that protocol. The patient lies with face up in a comfortable position, is conscious. We don't need deep sedation or general anesthesia, only perform local anesthesia because the capsule of the thyroid gland is uh, the only part of the thyroid gland that is rich in sensitive fi nervous fiber. This procedure is uh, absolutely painless because the moduli treatment allows us to predict the safety area. We can see which will be the necrosis, but also with an external marker in the monitor that we can see where the heating completely drops off. So we can have any damage. This is very important because it makes the treatment very safe, easy to teach and easy to learn. Differently from other thermoblade technique where a lot of things led to uh, improvisation because we have to build in our mind how to treat by moving the needle in order to reach all the parts of the nodule with the laser, everything sprung before. That's incredible that you have been able to figure out a way to plan ahead exactly where that probe needs to be to treat only the areas inside of that nodule and not anything outside of the target area being damaged. That's just incredible. I would love if you could show us the video of what that looks like on the ultrasound. Okay, this is the laser. As you can see, this is the, the, the moduli treatment and this the interface that is linked to the generator, the laser generator, ultrasound monitor. You see the thyroid tissue and the nodule. In this case, we used uh, only one needle because the nodule was small, but was uh, very superficial and produced a bulge in the neck with a great aesthetic discomfort for the patient. This is the monitor of the laser where we can check everything, the power that we deliver, the total amount of energy that we decide to reach to obtain the necrosis. And the white image in the, in the middle of the monitor is the, the artifact that is produced by the necrosis. The white line is the needle, so we clearly visualize everything during the procedure. And you see that uh, inside that uh, very thin blue line, everything is checked and everything is controlled. And what happens uh, outside is not uh, dangerous for the patients. So by this way, uh, in a very simple manner, we can check everything. This white line is a representative of the needle guide where the fibers is uh, inserted. Then at the tip, of the laser fiber is marked with a, a green cross. Behind the tip of the laser, we produce the necrosis. So we can control, we can check everything, and we are very sure, we are very safe that everything 
is done without damaging. I wanted to ask you about this blue oval okay. shape. This is the safety area. Everything is outside of this blue area cannot not be uh, affected by the thermal injury. So we know that we remain strictly in that area. The technology just is mind blowing to me. About how long does this procedure take to complete? Well, it depends on the volume of the nodules that mm -hmm. we have to treat because uh, this is related to the volume. This is related to the energy to deliver for nodules. Uh, about six, uh, uh, eight milliliters, we need a release of energy for about 10 minutes. With one or two needles, about 10 minutes for each session. If the volume of the nodule and the shape of the nodule is very long uh, along the axis of the neck, and so we decide to retract the needle in order to treat the upper part of the nodule, we retract the needle, so we light on again, and then we have to calculate other 10 minutes more for the treatment. So it depends from the nodule volume. You can talk to the patient during the procedure. You can uh, ask some question without moving the, the head during the procedure. You can reply, you can cough, you can swallow. But when you reply, I say, please don't move your, your head. And many of the patients who are interested in these types of procedures are very interested in understanding the procedure, how it works. And they love the fact that they can talk with their doctor during the procedure as they're monitoring their voice. After the procedure, we put a transparent dressing on the neck in order to be able to check by ultrasound examination what happens after the procedure in order to avoid complication that could be experienced by the patient when they go home. So we perform. Uh, always an ultrasound evaluation after the procedure. It's very easy without removing anything. When we put the ice pack on the neck, uh, this transparent dressing uh, protect the skin from the ice. Then the patient be recovered for two hours. Usually they don't need any medication after this. Uh, only if we treat very large nodule, and so we expect that will be a large edema after the procedure, uh, four milligrams of beta metasone are injected intravenous to avoid problems and to reduce this edema. So the, the, the people that, that we have treated can go back home very quickly and uh, uh, recover in a very easy and fast way all the activities, all the functions, and go back to work the day after. This is very important because we have to look to the quality of life of our patients. After that, uh, one, three, six, and 12 months, we have the follow-up with the evaluation of the thyroid hormones. We perform an ultrasound evaluation to check the reduction, the shrinkage of the nodule. The typical reduction in size is around 60 to 70%. Yes, we, we are satisfied when we reach this target that is mainly 60, 70%. You have to think that there is um, usually a sort of, of race between who advocates RFA versus laser, claiming that RFA is able to produce a greater volume of necrosis or uh, less regrowth. This is not a race. This is not a war against the two uh, treatments. Because uh, what's our target? Our target is to reduce the compressive symptoms or the aesthetic discomfort. So the difference between 60 or 70% is a nonsense. What we need is the disappearance of the aesthetic discomfort and the uh, recover the function. So the trachea move up to the middle line, the patient has no more difficulties to swallow, to talk, uh, and so on. And this is the reason to perform the best treatment that we can do, taking in our mind that this is the target, because we don't need to remove the gland. Mm -hmm. We have to save the thyroid. So I have to reduce the symptom. When they completely disappeared, it this mainly happen when we treat 60% of the volume, all the work is done. And do you ever find that you need to repeat the laser procedure? Yes, there are some cases in uh, where we need uh, two sessions, but this is planned before. So we have a cervical portion of the nodule and the mediastinum portion, how to treat the deeper part. We cannot treat in, in the same time there are tips and tricks to apply in this case. We treat in the first session all the mass that is in cervical anatomical site. Then we 
wait from one to three months that the fibrosis let the deeper part split up mm -hmm. and then we can safely retreat the deeper part. This is the only way to perform this procedure with very, very large nodules. That was actually my experience with my particular nodule and RFA, having that first portion moved the nodule upward as it shrunk. So it's interesting that that same pr principle applies here with laser as well. Are there any risks or side effects from laser? No, practically none, because everything is planned, everything is checked during the procedure, but is planned before. This procedure doesn't affect the dangerous triangle because we work on another plane. Obviously, there are some cases of complication that are described in literature. But mainly, uh, they refer to a small hematoma that can be controlled, pushing on the side of the hematoma and mm, putting the ice pack on it. Are very rare case of fever after the procedure because uh, everything is done sterile preparation, so it's very very difficult to have infection on the side of the puncture or inside the, the nodule. So this patient looks to have had a pretty large nodule yeah, and had a very great result. Yes, it was a very great result because the lady had a great improvement in her quality of life, mainly for the aesthetic discomfort and mainly for the compressive symptoms because this nodule, as you can see, was mainly isthmic, so pushed on the trachea very deep. The lady suffered from dysphagia and also the voice change over time. This nodule was a, a challenge because uh, uh, it's not so easy to treat this kind of, of nodule that are mainly superficial and then also very deep. So mm -hmm. you have to decide for the first session what the part of the nodule can be treated before the superficial or the deeper part. Mm -hmm. So the patient had a, a very good compliance with the treatment because one to three months she felt the discomfort completely disappearing. Mm -hmm. Then we treated the deeper part of the nodule. And by this way, the treatment continued to reduce the superficial part. And then the problem was completely solved. The nodule remains as a scar inside the lobe, but mm -hmm. we have saved the thyroid, not removed the gland. I'm sure she's perfectly content to have that small scar that's she, inside of her thyroid. Absolutely. <laughs> she sends a lot of patients. <laughs> this is very similar to what my neck looked like before I had my RFA treatment. I really liked this image because it reminded me of, of my own experience. I want to make sure I ask if there are any barriers for physicians who want to learn how to do this procedure that would prevent them from taking it on? No, there is no barrier, absolutely not. They can perform, they can learn easily this procedure, and then they, in a very quick way, start to perform this procedure. They can perform it also as a private office, so in an outpatient basis, or they can perform uh, in hospital. Uh, it is very important to say and to inform patients and to inform doctors, as on May 21, laser obtain a CPT code so the treatment can be reimbursed and can be billed by the insurance company and by Medicare. And this is the only treatment that has a known CPT code, while RFA uses a general code that is not satisfactory for the reimbursement and is not completely applied by Medicare and insurance companies. So this is a great advantage because using uh, this procedure, the patient doesn't pay out of pocket because it's completely covered by insurance company, by Medicare. This is important to inform. That's very exciting. It's very useful also to spread this procedure all over. Yes, insurance is a big barrier, both for physicians and patients. At the heart of the issue, patients have to be able to afford their treatment. So many patients, it's so sad when they tell me well, I can't afford to do this. I'm just going to have the surgery. Right. Even though the surgery is much more expensive, it is covered by insurance. It's very exciting to know that this is a covered procedure, that there's a dedicated CBT code, and hopefully that will encourage more physicians to get training because they won't have fears of not being 
reimbursed by the insurance companies. I agree completely with you. It's important to give this information because there are a lot of patients that cannot afford this expensive procedure, but mm -hmm. we need to inform doctors and patients on this opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and ring that little bell so you don't miss the next video. I have lots of exciting content coming up in the near future about RFA, PEI, laser ablation, traveling for treatment, and so much more. Never forget to educate yourself and be your own health advocate. Now, watch this next video right here.